Welcome everyone and thank you for joining our webinar covering best resources and configurations for Maximo Rookies. My name is Betsy Ambrosius and along with me leading our webinar is Tori Foley, one of Project Tech's Maximo specialists. Today, today Tori will provide you resources to connect with other Maximo end users and important configuration tips to remember. But before I turn it over to Tori, just some reminders, this webinar will be recorded and all phone lines have been muted. We will be sending out the recording by the end of the week, and we'll be answering all the questions at the end of the webinar, so, so please submit your question in the field box that you see. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Tori. Thank you, Betsy. Thanks everybody for joining. Today we're just going to go over some resources and some configurations and tips to remember for uh, Maximo Rookies and for Rookie Administrators as well. So we'll go ahead and just dive right in. So the first resource that I want to discuss is Maximo Times. So Maximo Times, um, they have a free option but they also have a couple of paid options. Um, included in the free option, you have access to select blogs and tutorials, but you also get full access to the forum. I find that the forum gives you the most information because you have the ability to see questions and answers from different users, and um, you have the ability to ask your own questions as well as get other information. The paid options give you more information as well. The next online resource is MaximoUsers.org. So this is a listing of different local user groups that you can join. It also gives you forums where you can connect with other user groups and people that are in your group. So IBM, um, a developer at IBM has an IBM Maximo customization and development blog. So I've, I've actually got some information from this blog uh, coming up later in some slides. So this is actually a really good one. There's just blog posts that you can search. You can see comments that are on the blogs, questions that are asked, any answers. You also um, you get updates every few months. So he's not writing on there every day or every week, but every couple of months he will put new information up, and it's always good information, and it's explained very well. The Project Tech YouTube channel is also one of our um, one of our resources that. I recommend. So the YouTube channel offers playlists and the playlists are grouped together um, by new features or system administration or functional demos. So this will give you, uh, you just choose the playlist, this will give you different videos to choose from that are within that section and it's got a lot of good information. Um, a lot of stuff is step by step so you could have it up on one monitor on another monitor. You could have a, an instance of Maximo that you could follow along if you have questions or problems. LinkedIn, I think, is a kind of a forgotten resource for some people. So there's a lot of groups on LinkedIn that maybe you get added to when you first get on there and you don't really look back at it very much, but it can be extremely helpful. So there are just a few uh, LinkedIn Maximo groups that I myself belong to and I find that are pretty helpful if I have questions. So Maximo Professionals, um, Maximo User Group Summit, the IBM Maximo Implementation, and as well as one just titled Maximo. Um, there are several more that you can join if you just search Maximo when you log into LinkedIn and then on the left hand side you can click on groups. It will show you any group with Maximo in it or related to Maximo. I think um, it's kind of a, another forgotten resource is actually the help inside of Maximo. So when you're in Maximo, um, up in the top right hand corner next to the IBM logo there's a question mark and this will give you some system information, can give you some um, there's like a support link, but this also will give you help for the application that you're logged into, and you can just go to Maximo Help, where it will bring everything up, and then you can search by what you're looking for. Um, I find that the application help is extremely helpful. So if you're in work orders and you have some questions, if you go to the question mark icon and choose work order help, it'll take you, it'll pull you up into a separate tab, and it'll give you all of your work order information help, and then you can choose what you're looking for. So you can go to statuses or maybe work types or just questions about um, general work order issues. Though I'll be listed in there as well. Okay, so next we have some configurations and just some tips to remember. So 
So the first thing that everybody should be aware of is the, the basic licensing from IBM. So we have authorized, we have limited, and we have express. An authorized user is basically just a power user that can access any application. And this is as determined by the maximum administrator for the, for the company. But so authorized can be any application and any module, whatever the administrator believes that they should have the ability to look at. The limited license is next, and this is a little less information. Um, this gives you, it's like a standard user, so you can only access three modules inside of Maximo. So again, your Maximo administrator is the one that's going to choose this, but you get three modules and then any application listed in those three modules. A limited user is also going to inherit the express license access. So express licenses is extremely basic. They can view and they can run reports. They can view and approve records, and then they can also make updates to work orders that are specifically assigned to them. Um, the assigning of the work order is determined per company, but once you do that, you just do a little bit of customization to make sure that um, the signature options are only available when they are the owner. So other than that basic information, they all also have the ability to have read access to any application, again, as allowed by your Maximo administrator. Um, and so this actually, this license information, it's a pretty simplified version. This is the one that I pulled from the Maximo um, development blog. It was some pretty helpful information. Some security group tips. Um, so security groups can get pretty out of control pretty quickly when creating a new instance or creating new users. So we have some best practices that we like to follow for security groups. So for site access, if you have multiple sites in your organization, making individual security groups per site is the best way to maintain what people can have access to. Also building groups with their role and their reference to a license type. So if you have planners or you have maintenance technicians or a buyer, but you have all of those and maybe you have two planners but one is limited and one is authorized, you could make one planner security group that's limited access and one planner security group that has authorized access. And you just put that in the description of the security group, that way everyone knows what the security access involves. Approval limits is something else that's very easily tracked if you do it in individual security groups. So if you have somebody that should have a PR approval of $50,000, you create a security group, and that is the only access that's in the group is the $50,000. You put that in your description, and then you give that group to the user. So if you have multiple people with different groups, um, you know what their access is just by looking at their group instead of having to dig into security groups to find where it is. You also, um, if you have an administrator, you want to be able to give them their access, so you could just create a client administration group, and it would be the authorized access. You could put that in the description as well, but then you would just go through and give whatever you want the client admin to have access to. So if they're the super user, that's where that security would come from. So some functionality that does need a little bit of work to be set up inside of Maximo but can be really helpful once it is, is the forgot password functionality. So on the login screen there, um, if it's set up properly on the bottom screen, on the bottom of the screen there will be a link that says forgot your password. So if somebody forgets their password, they click on it, they have a security question that they have to answer, which they have previously answered and saved inside of Maximo. If it's the correct answer and it matches their email address matches, they're going to get a temporary password sent to their email address. So there's a, a couple of steps you have to take to get this set up. So the first one um, involves the registration user, which is called RegUser. So in, um, inside of your system properties, this would be for your administrators. Inside of system properties, if you find the reg user property and then the reg password property, this is where you'll find out what the names of the reg user and what the password are. Once you find these two, you actually have to go into your user application, find the user, and make sure that the password matches. Once that's done and it matches, there's actually a domain in um, Maximo already set up. It's called password hint question. So this is going to hold all of your passwords sort of security questions. It comes out of box with one. Uh, all you have to do is add more as you come up with questions. So you just add the value, which is just the name of the question. The description is what the actual question is. 
once that's done, you actually have to go into App Designer. You have to add um, add your fields on your add your password hint question and password hint answer fields onto the change password dialog. So once you have that done, you just have to make sure that your forgot password link is on your login page. And once that's done, all the users have to do is um, they log in, they go to their profile, and then password information. They put in their current password. They choose a security question. They answer it. Once they have that saved, if they ever forget their password in the future, if they click the link, answer the, the question correctly, a temporary password is emailed to them, and all they have to do is reset after that. Tab versus enter is something that I find is um, pretty hard to remember when you're getting in Maximo, especially if it's new. Um, it's very easy to just want to hit enter after you type in anything, but inside of Maximo and inside of different browsers, this can get different reactions. So the most common times to use the actual tab key is when you're doing data entry. So if you are just trying to put in time on a work order and you have several different labor transactions that you have to enter, you would do new row, you would hit um, go into the labor code field first, type that in. Once you're ready for the next field, instead of hitting enter, you're just going to hit tab. And it's going to tab you to the next field that's ready for you to put your information into. So you tab through until you have all your data entered. Another place for tab is when you're doing advanced search. So if you're typing information into advanced search and you want to fill in um, several different fields to filter by, you're going to tab through the different fields until you have all of your information entered. Then you would move to using enter. So if you're searching in advanced search after you've put your filters in or on the list tab after you've put your filters in, when you're ready to actually do a search, you're going to hit enter and it's going to start searching your records for you. Enter is also used when you're doing any new records. So um, like we said with the data entry, when you're putting labor transactions in, once you've filled out your first transaction, you're ready for the second one. If you hit enter, you're going to get a new row and you're going to be ready to put in your second set of labor transaction information. So Maximo does a pretty good job of password encryption for you. So when you get your um, password changed and you have to type in your new one, so say you type in your new password and then you tab out of the field, you may see that some characters have been added or maybe even removed. Um, this is just the password being encrypted inside of Maximo, so you don't have to worry about you know, maybe you type something in wrong, or maybe you hit an extra letter. So all you have to do is type in the same thing and confirm new password, and when you hit OK, it will tell you if they don't match, but they generally are going to match, and it was just encrypted. So when you get an email with your new password or with the temporary password, you need to make sure that if you are copying and pasting the password out of your email, um, it will paste an extra space at the end of the email. So when you paste this into the password field, you need to either backspace out one character to make sure that that space isn't there, or you should try your hardest not to copy and paste, but to just type in the new password. Having a default insert site can get you into quite a bit of trouble um, if you don't have one in Maximo. So it, it will mess with quite a bit of different functions inside of Maximo if you forget to list one on here. So you could even have site access set up in a group, but if you don't have a default insert site listed, it, may, it, gives you the, uh, it takes away the ability for you to search. Um, some application access can be removed. You can't do any drill downs, so in locations or assets you won't be able to do any of that. Um, you can't create a new record because you don't have a default insert site. So you just want to always make sure that your default insert site is filled out. This is very important for new users. So there are um, lots of different menu options inside of Maximo, and it's kind of hard to keep some of them straight. Um, so something to remember is the detail menu, which you'll have on some of your fields. So the double chevron arrows, that's called your detail menu. So this is where you're going to have some different options inside of it, like the select value or a go-to. Select value is actually going to give you um, a list of options to choose from. So if you have location and you go to select value, it's going to give you different locations to pull back into your field, and that's going to be the magnifying glass. The go-to is just the little green arrow, which is going to actually hyperlink you to another application. So if you're looking at locations, but you're not seeing what you think that you should be, you can actually do a hyperlink into go to locations and you're going to be able to look in the application as you normally would. 
Once you're in another application, up in the right-hand corner, you're going to have a couple of different options. You're going to have return, or if you're on one specific record, you're going to have a return with value. So what this is going to do is it's just going to pull whatever value you're on into the application and to the field that you came from. So if you're on a work order and you're looking at assets, you find a specific asset. If you do return with value, it's going to put that asset onto your work order. Authorizing group reassignment inside of your security groups can kind of be a gotcha if you forget about it. Um, so what this does is it, it's very useful when you have multiple administrators in one instance. So each individual security group is going to need to have each administrator added as somebody who is allowed to authorize group reassignment. So this means that the administrator has the ability to assign users or remove users from the security group. If all of your administrators are not added to each security group if under authorized group reassignment, they're not going to be able to add or remove people from that security group. Security for running reports can be some um, important information, especially if you forget it, because sometimes you forget to do it and you also forget where it's located at. So in the report administration application, if you go to more actions, there's going to be an option called set application security. So if you find an application where you know you've done in the security group, you've given the group access to run reports, but they still they go to run reports, they see no reports listed. So what you do is under report application security, you're going to find the application that they're having trouble in. So if I'm in work order tracking and I'm not able to see anything, I'm in the client admin group, I have run reports access, but I don't see any reports. I find the work order tracking application, and then below it, I can find the security groups that have access to it. So client admin, we just added it. And then I have to pick which reports I want anybody in the client admin group to have access to. So you can get BERT reports, Cognos reports, or custom. So custom, even though QBRs are BERT reports, they fall under the custom option in this, in this instance. So if you want people to be able to see QBRs, Cognos reports, or BERT reports, you can just check all or you can check individual boxes depending on what they should have access to. Thank you, Tori, um, for a great overview on some resources that our Maximo end users can use and also um, configuration tips. Uh, we did have a couple questions come through that um, we'd like to answer. So we'll go ahead and get started with those. Um, a user asked, uh, Express users can access work orders assigned to them and what other modules can they access and what are the limitations? So for Express licenses, they do have the ability to access work orders. They can edit work orders that they're assigned to. They have read-only access to any other application in any other module. That's all determined by the Maximo administrator. Um, I do believe that administration is out for that one as well. So admi the administration module is only available to authorized users. Um, but for Express, they can have read-only to everything else. Um, they can approve records, so PRs or POs and work orders can all be approved as well. Great, Great thanks. thanks. Um, and also, in regards to licensing, again, uh, can a limited user have access to any three modules available on Maximo? So I just mentioned that a little bit. Um, the authorized user can have access to any module. A limited user can have access to any three modules that their administrator deems that they should have access to with a little bit of an exception. Um, the administration module is not a part of the limited license. So only authorized users can have access into the applications inside of the administration module. Great. Um, how many times of trying my password will it take to become blocked? And I feel like this is a common question. So generally, um, this is three times. But this can be configured by your Maximo administrator. Um, all that's done under security control settings inside of Maximo. And back to licensing. Um, 
a user asked, so what kind of role would you see a limited user have and what kind of role would you see an express user have if you're assigning licenses? So that really depends on what um, what your users are, uh, what they're doing. So you maybe could have some supervisors that they aren't necessarily doing any work inside of Maximo. They're just reviewing that the work that their team is doing. So if you have technicians that are doing work and their supervisor just has to review any labor transactions or materials that they've used on work orders, uh, the supervisor could then use an express license because the express is read-only to any applications, and then if they need to edit work orders, they can, but only theirs. But the, gener the general um, role for that one would just be the ability to, to read-only into any application that they need. Um, limited could be more of kind of like a technician, or if you have any planners that um, do planning work, if you have um, any of your inventory or your buyers could be under limited because they really just need like purchasing and inventory. Um, that would be pretty good as well. It just depends on what people are doing and how much access you foresee them needing. Okay, we have a couple more that came through. Uh, do we need special characters in our password to reset? So this is another thing that is configurable inside of Maximo. So the security controls option um, that does allow you to set up the need for special characters. You can have special characters, you can decide um, how many times a password can be reused, you can decide how frequently somebody has to reset their password. There are quite a few options for that. Okay, and um, what kind of approval limits can you set in a security group? So inside of the security group is going to take any of the approval limits that are needed inside of Maximo. So that's going to be approval limits for purchase orders, for um, purchase requests. If you have invoice approvals, you can also set up tolerances and limits in there as well. All right, another question came through. So for the limited license, do the job plans and preventive and maintenance applications count as a module a piece because they are in different modules? Yes. So, yes. So the job plans are under the planning module and then preventative maintenance is under the preventive maintenance module, so they would both count as separate ones. Awesome. I think that wraps up the questions. Um, you want to go to the next slide. We have some follow So thank you all for participating. If you have any further questions regarding best resources and configurations for Maximo, feel free to um, contact, contact us directly. Um, also, be sure to register for our next webinar in the Rookie Series, Simplifying Maximo for End Users, on Wednesday, November 16th with Chris Winston. and um, also, be, please be sure to complete the survey at the end of the webinar when you log off. And thank you all again for taking the time of your day and attending today's webinar. Have a great day.